Gordon Johnson, come on up. Welcome. Appreciate you, as always. Always good to have a different opinion, just like your conversation against Elon, but uh, your opinions are not always um, as accurate as some of ours. But you tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I just had a question um, for anyone, um, I guess, who's bullish, which is probably 100% of this room. But, you know, I'm just looking at, you know, the Troy Test like recently took his number down to 432 for the quarter. Uh, that's out. So he's saying, you know, deliveries are going to drop from 466 to 432. Uh, Deutsche Bank is out with a note just now where they're cutting their number to 440. And they're saying based on the discussion they had with Tesla, uh, Tesla's no longer ramping up Berlin and Texas to 10,000 a week. They're just going to be m m small incremental units next year. In addition, they're saying the Cybertruck isn't going to be based on their comments with their discussions with Tesla, the Cybertruck isn't going to be significant next year either. So they also cut their 2024 number. So it looks like, you know, the growth story is ending. The 50% per year, what I believe is a mirage um, of growth forever is ending. So it seems like to still be bullish, you have to believe um, a lot of comments and prognostications from Elon Musk. But, you know, the reality is, you know, Elon Musk held up a fake solar panel to sell Solar City in 2016, he put on the uh, so the Gordon. Black Gordon, video. did you see? Did, did you see the bot? Oh, hold on. Uh, so did can you I, see the bot I, demonstration? Can I finish? Can I finish. So in 2016, uh, he put out the Painted no. Black video, which we now know was doctored. That was that was via the Hulu documentary where former employees said it was doctored. Um, he filed a 13G instead of a 13D in association with his acquisition of Twitter. That's a violation of securities laws. Clearly, nothing's happened yet. I guess my point is, you know, he, for seven years, he said next year we're going to have, you know, full self-drive. Clearly, that hasn't happened. So I, I guess my question is, why do so many people believe what Elon Musk says at this point, given so many things he said have not come to fruition? Thank you. Should, should we reply no. back with all the things that he said that has well, come to fruition? Well, let me answer him real <laughs> fast, Herbert. Let me let me let me. So, so Gordon, I, I hear what you're saying. We're, this is a, a very civil debate, and I, I think um, we're going to be classy about it. I agree with you. Short term, Tesla stock could go down. Yeah, if they miss deliveries, uh, the street I think is looking for 462. If they come in with a 440 number, you know, maybe yeah, it's going to get hit a little bit. But I think here's where you you're and 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 I'm listening to you, and I've I've followed you for a long time. But we have to just be honest. You've been wrong on the stock for for a long time. I, I don't know exactly when you started covering it, but I'll, I'll let you answer it. Maybe it was five years. How long it's been? You, you've been wrong on 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 the appreciation of the stock. That's number one. Number two, I think what you're what you, what you're getting wrong with the stock is stock is not just numbers, right? You have to look at it in totality. The market's already assigned a value, and it's not like it's happened for like a day or a week. The market has assigned Tesla market cap for now years and years and years over all the rest of the automakers. So that's just a known fact. It's not like a blip. It's not like one of these little things like a VinFast came out for a week, it's up and now it's down. This is a static thing. I, and also, I think where you get lost is you don't take anything of the future of Tesla into consideration. Even if it may be well off, it could still support a stock price. So when, when you get these low stock, stock valuations, you're not actually putting in that there is a possibility, even with Elon's exaggerations, and I do agree with you, sometimes he say things that takes much longer or, or takes very long to develop, and some things he gets right, like the 500,000 in 2020. So I, I think where you get screwed up on with the stock is you're, you're not giving any other possibility to any other revenues coming other than the automobile business. So I, I, I think you're okay with your, your some of your, your chatter, but I think you get the big picture completely wrong with not understanding the entirety of the business and not understanding what investors may value five years from now or 10 years from now. So I'll leave it at that. But I agree with you in the short term, anything could happen and Tesla may fall. Let, let me respond to that. So 100%. We have been wrong on Tesla stock since 2020. I would argue and, you know, remind people that we initiated in 2018 when the stock was 300 with a, I think it was $75 price target. Stock did go to 120. And then what happened, what people seem to forget is what happened in 2020 is we had COVID and then the Fed did QE infinity. And the, some of the worst run companies in the world, stock prices went to, you know, uh, effectively infinity. 
I believe without COVID and without QE, I think Tesla stock would not have skyrocketed. One other thing I'll highlight is I think what, what people miss with Tesla is in 2020, right, there was a part shortage, right? There was a part shortage for automobiles. And what, what some people may not realize is a lot of people are tech analysts is with car companies, when you qualify in a new chip, it usually takes two to three years because you have to test it in real world environments, both hot and cold, and make sure that chip's going to work. Tesla, however, was qualifying chips in in two weeks, whereas other automotive companies weren't willing to do that. So what happened in 2020 is Tesla had availability of products and it was ramping Shanghai when other car companies did it. So what Tesla did is they raised prices, their margins went to the moon, and they, they sold that as we manufacture cars better than everyone else, right? But now there's no longer a parts shortage. So what's happening? Tesla's margins have imploded. In one Q of 2022, I believe, their operating margins were 19.2%. In 2Q of 2023, they're 9.6%. And they're going to fall again in Q3 because they're cutting prices. My point is, Tesla temporarily benefited from part shortage and a willingness to, you know, basically skirt safety, uh, typical safety um, norms in automobiles, thus having more product available and being able to price that product above what is the norm. That, we believe, is why Tesla's prices are falling because their margins are regressing to the mean, which, by the way, right now their margins are below Toyota, Stellantis, BMW, and Mercedes. So I don't think we have it wrong. I think what we got wrong, and I'm, I'm willing to admit this, is COVID was a boon for Tesla because Tesla was willing to do things that no other automotive company was willing to do. I think those, that, those things they did aren't coming back to bite them. But nonetheless, you know, keep in mind, right, they took chips out of the wheel. They took um, sensors off the car, et cetera, et cetera. So can the I, point is, I, I think that what we're looking at now is a market where everybody has parts. Everybody has cars available. You have more EVs available, right? Tesla's margins are imploding. Their earnings are imploding. Um, their deliveries are no longer growing, yet they're valued at, you know, more than the next eight largest automotive companies combined. So when you say the market describes the value, I agree with that. But the market is often wrong. You know, I, I've seen this with a number of stocks we've covered. Um, so wait, wait, wait. So you really believe that that this stock is going to go to 25 bucks or whatever ridiculous price you have there? Yeah, I mean, you can call it ridiculous. So we, we, when we covered Tilray, Tilray was a 30 a three hundred dollar stock, and we had a two dollar target. No, we're talking. We're talking Tesla here. You really believe? Right. My but, question but is, I'm you really believe you, this is the you price? An example, like we, I heard the same comment. No, I mean, you talk, you talk, you talk. I know you can talk for a long time. That's not the point. I'm asking you, do you really believe Tesla is twenty five dollars, or is that your trick to get on the TV shows because they need a bear having a stupid price? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get into an argument or, or you know, take this down to a level of. <laughs> I want an answer. I, All I want is an answer. I, I, no argument whatsoever. You, I, Tell I me. I think you should be respectful to me. To answer your question. I am. To Can answer you answer? your question, 100%. In fact, we we posted our DCF of how we get to our price target to Twitter probably 10 times. And if you look at our assumptions, they're quite aggressive, actually. You block me, so I can't read them. If you unblock me, I'll read them. Uh, well, I block people that, you know, I, either insult well, Gordon, or send racist yeah, comments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm being respectful, though, Gordon, but 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 on any legitimate, so I'm being respectful. If, if Say they do, but let's just call it, just to make an even number, $4 in earnings. If your price target, what's your price target, if I may ask, your 12 months? Yeah, but they're not going to do $4 in earnings. <laughs> they're not. That's, that's okay, not let's happen. say they do three. They're going to do at least three in gap earnings. What What's your price target? You, my price target is $24.66. Okay, so on three dollars a gap earnings this year, you know, roughly you're you're putting a multiple on it of, of of what ten? Like the automotive, it's, it's, the automotive you're, you're industry trade trades at a multiple of six times. I understand that's four, but they're a dying business of an ice cars. They're not a electric. Dying if if you believe electrics the revolution, GM selling twelve. You can't put a multiple on that. It's just ridiculous, Tesla's though. I'm being respectful. It's ridiculous. Gordon, you said Go you ahead. were going to be respectful. Please don't talk over each other. It's impossible yeah. to hear. I was just going to fi- I'm going to finish it up. Then, Gordon, I'll give it back to you. That multiple just doesn't make sense, and I'll just say why, and you could, ret- you could refute it. If, if they're going to do $3 in earnings, and I think everybody in the world thinks they're going to do a minimum of $3 in earnings, you have less than a $10 uh, trailing PE on this stock. And 
you're, you're not taking into any of the uh, FSD possibility. You're not taking any uh, FSD possibility, energy business, which is the storage business. You're not taking any of that. This is not Ford. This is not GM. GM sold like 12 EVs last quarter. Ford is struggling to do any. Um, they're on strike. They're having an internal war inside the company. They're having major problems. They don't even want to do EVs. So, again, stock is about looking a little bit in the future, maybe two to five years. And we know that Tesla is the king of EVs. They're selling 60 to 70 percent of all the EVs in North America. These other legacy companies are not. So to ascribe a, 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 a value, a, a P.E. multiple, of the similar to a GM or Ford who have none of the possibilities of an FSD, none of the possibilities of, of designing a robot, none of the possibilities of an energy business, to me is just silly. Go ahead. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Ford's, Ford's aut autonomous driving technology is ranked by everyone leaps and bounds ahead of Tesla. They're roughly level four. Tesla's level two by Tesla's own admission. The street right now, so that's point number one. Point number two the street right now is at $2.95, $2.95 in GAP EPS this year. However, Deutsche Bank just cut their Q3 delivery estimate from $4.70 to $4.40. And they just cut their 2024 delivery estimate by roughly 300,000 cars. So street estimates are coming down, not going up. So <laughs> the multiple they're trading at on today's number is going to go much higher as that number comes down. And then point number three, people have been saying Tesla is more than a car company for at least, you know, since I've been covering it, 2018, right? In 2018, Adam Jonas at Morgan Stanley was giving Tesla $300 billion of valuation for taking over the ride share industry by 2023. So in 2018, Morgan Stanley was saying, you want to add an extra $300 billion to Tesla because by 2023, Uber and Lyft will be out of business. And they'll all be robo taxis. Now, <laughs> clearly that didn't happen, right? But every year, right, this 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 thesis on Tesla shifts to some other far out, you know, they're gonna be a robot company, it's gonna okay. be a you know, a, whatever. It's a car company. Ninety eight percent of their revenues from selling are, are their, their gross profit from selling cars. Um, if you look at what happened when they acquired Solar City. The megawatts okay, of solar uh, cell imploded. Uh, so yeah, you, okay, you, let's, you, let's you stop have, here for a second. Saying it's going to be something else, okay. but I'm just talking about uh, what it is. And thank it, you, it, Gordon. It really thank doesn't you. matter. So let's, let's have uh, Jeff come, come up and, uh, and, and right. keep, keep, keep your answer short so we have more people answering. Let's Jeff, go ahead. We'll do okay. the hands signal here, okay? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, let's go, let's go in reverse. So Ford doesn't have a level four solution. They, got, they, they shut down Argo AI. Um, so I don't know where, where that came from. Going back to the 2020 start of, uh, you said there was a part shortage in the industry. What actually happened, I, I actually advise mega cap companies in supply chain. I've run supply chain for, for multiple Fortune 100 companies. And I'm also going to speak to your part qualification issue because I've been chief quality officer of multiple companies at, at, this, at this level. So number one, there really wasn't a part shortage. What happened is, is, everybody saw COVID coming and they took their orders down and, and to these fabs that are greater than 20, 30 nanometer size chips. Um, there's not a lot of capacity and it's all fixed. So when they took their orders down, these fabs basically shuttered and to, and to get them restarted, these companies, these, these fabs that have these companies, they have, they have solutions under 10, 10 nanometers, they have solutions under 14 nanometers, and those are much higher volume. They can do get more out of their fabs to do that. So, they took their orders down. They got freaked out with COVID. They mismanaged their supply chain. Tesla kept their order flow going, and they were grow they have a they have a secular growing business, EV inside of auto. So they kept their orders on their supply chain. Now, in terms of qual part qualifications, there's no there's no one standard that every company needs to follow to to substitute a part in and out. Every company can can come up with their own reliability standard. And what they need to do to get that part from, you know, tr trial all the way to uh, as a sub into mass production. Uh, there are certain standards that need to be met, but in terms of Tesla, you know, just throwing parts in and hoping they work, and and that that's not the case. The reason they were actually able to go faster is they have their software developers all under one roof. They have their hardware developers all under one roof. Whereas you heard from Farley, they have to farm out 
um, you know, the, the, the manufacturing of their cars farmed out to hundreds of suppliers that actually have also have the right software for their modules and integrate them back to Tesla, obviously, or integrate them back to Ford. So obviously Tesla is going to have the faster solution for qualification. They're going to able, they're going to able to get through an issue like COVID or get through an issue like a supply shock much faster than anybody. So that's actually what happened. Um, and in terms of gross, in terms of gross margins, um, I think, I think a couple of things you have to look at. First off, you have to split these companies out from their ice business and their EV business, because right now, uh, Farley and, and, and Mary Barr have said they don't know how to produce an EV under $40,000 profitably this decade. And you have to look at, you have to look at the contribution margin of a BYD or these other companies in, in their EV business and what they're making. I think what you're going to find is that Tesla has more of the margin share uh, than these significantly more of the margin share. So there's a little bit of a spring loaded compression that's happening at this point because of what they've done with pricing adjustments. But I, I think it's a it's a momentary thing in time. They're going to be able to improve that pretty oh, quickly. The quick, BMW numbers you're reporting, question. the Mercedes numbers you're reporting are not EV only. Can I ask you a quick question? First of all, you, you can't compare yeah. Tesla's gross margins to Legacy Auto because Tesla sells direct to the consumer, meaning their discounts are, are, are in OPEX, whereas Legacy sells to the dealers, meaning their discounts are in gross margins. If you want to compare margins on a like-for-like -like basis, you have to compare operating margins. That's number one. Number two... Uh, Ford does have uh, uh, handless driver technology that is on a level above Tesla. So I, I don't know what your point was there. And then yes. point number three is my question to you is very simple. Why is it why has Tesla cut prices roughly 40 percent when the rest of the auto industry combined has cut prices 6 percent? What is your explanation for that? I'm just curious. Sure. So the pricing of components spiked during COVID. And, 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 as, and as that price, both at the commodity level and at the non-commodity level, and then as that pricing is relaxed down, they've been able to, to pull that pricing back and give that savings back so, to consumers. So why does their margins, so they can why their margins rate, go out from 19% to 9% in roughly it, four quarters? It's, it's a point in time. It's a compression in a point in time. They're, they're, they're going to be able to grow their gross margins. The other thing is, uh, if you're gonna, if you say you can't compare certain aspects of companies, hold on. I, I'm sorry, compare. I didn't understand your explanation. You're, you're saying you're that your question. you're interrupting me. I'm answering your question. If you're going to compare operating margins between these companies, Tesla is investing in Dojo. They are investing in a bot. They are investing in doing their own full self-driving software. They are doing way more things than these other companies you're comparing okay, them to. How can you say Tesla's investing in Dojo when Dojo, that word was not mentioned in their 10Q or 10K? Where are you getting that from? Are you making that up or where are you getting it from? They're buying silicon. They talked they're about it on the saving. conference call, um, they're, uh, Gordon. They're buying, silicon. they're buying silicon from NVIDIA and they're buying capacity from TSMC to build a D1 chip. You do That's realize the, dojo, the, the word dojo was not mentioned in their 10 Qs or 10 Ks, despite the fact that but you're not answering the you're answering the question. You're, in your reading, you're, saying what's in you're you're I'm answering the question. You're just talking about some talking point. I, I don't I know. I, I, I just I guess I'm trying to understand. You just said that the reason they're cutting prices is because component prices have come down and they're passing that along to their consumer. And then in the same breath. I asked you, then why is their gross margins, their operating margins rather, collapsed from 19% to 9%? And I, what was your answer to that? I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'll give you the answer to it, Gordon. He, the reason operating margins went down is because Tesla did a strategy of growing unit volume at the expense of profit. So there's no other automaker growing units like Tesla is, right? 30, 40, 50%. Even this year, they're going to grow uh well well more than any other car company so the reason operating margins went down is because they took the price of the car down to grow the volumes up okay so they just, they're still okay, growing so units way more than any other auto manufacturer they cut prices significantly in q3 and they there's massive discounts you can go online right now model three model y you're talking about four thousand dollar discounts and their units are going to be down roughly seven percent quarter over quarter so if they're cutting prices to grow units yet units don't grow what is your explanation for that? Thank you. Well, let's, let's, let's take this one step at a time. Since April, the only configurator price cuts they've done are, are on two models in China, and then they did the Model S and X. So you're talking about 4% of global volume 
on the two Model Y trims, and you're Incorrect. talking about cut in Korea and Japan as well. Okay, you're talking you're talking under five percent of their volume, and then the rest are inventory price cuts. So they've actually switched their strategy. The other answer to your question of why are they cutting their pricing? They're cutting their pricing so they can keep their factories and their supplier factories running at higher utilization. But that's ridiculous because this quarter, their utilization, based on what Troy Tesla is projecting, their, their production is going to be roughly under 80% of their, their, their stated capacity. So they're not keeping their factories fully running. And I, again, Deutsche Bank just put out a well, note. This, Let, hear me out. Deutsche Bank just published people. a note just now that says, based on discussions they had with Tesla at some meeting, they're not going to ramp Texas and Berlin up to 10000 a week. There's just going to be modest incremental increases next year. So Deutsche Bank is telling you already Tesla is preparing for a weaker 2024. So how do you yeah. explain that for a company that's valued at like, you know, 70 times earnings when the industry is valued at six times? Okay. They're, Can they're we, slowing okay, production. Let's, how do you explain let's, that? Let's, let's, okay, stop. let's, let's answer stop the question in Q3. Let's answer the Q, quick question in Q3. There's 75 production days that are countable in Q3. If there's you know, roughly two, 10 days to two weeks of shutdown, that's 20% of your active utilization that would be taken offline for the upgrades. That's the answer to the question. Okay, can but we they, just But they this entered the hey, quarter with 105,000 units of inventory, which so was a really high, them are in transit. and their production you know the is going to roughly match transit? their sales. So this isn't Do you understand a the difference? They have inventory to sell no. cars. This is simply no, no, they don't. demand not no, they matching don't. The inventory. In the same, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this around, guys. Same. We don't I don't want this kind of conversation. We've already given a lot of time on this. Matthew, what did you want to say? Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, I have a couple questions for Gordon. Gordon, thanks for joining us. Huge fan. Uh, thanks for not blocking me. Um, so number one, you know, I always hear you comparing Tesla's market cap to the next, you know, whatever eight biggest um, auto manufacturers. I'm just wondering if you would also consider comparing enterprise value, you know, most of those legacy companies are absolutely riddled with debt. Some of them, their debt exceeds their market cap. So obviously their enterprise value is much higher. So if you compare enterprise value, it's not, you know, Tesla isn't valued as much as the next eight combined. It's a uh, small amount. Um, second question, you know, this is a space for Tesla bulls. That means most of the people here are incentivized for Tesla to go up in value. So we're, we're kind of disclosing we're bulls. Personally, I'm, you know, hugely, uh, hugely invested in Tesla. It's by far my number one position. I think a lot of people would love to know, like, what are your incentives? Obviously, you're uh, an analyst. You don't hold any positions on, on Tesla, but you have clients who, who pay you money. Uh, you may have equity and other companies or you may have you know family members who work for gm or other businesses so it'd be great to know like what are your incentives what types of customers pay you how do you make money so if you share that i think we'd really appreciate it yeah so to your first question this is a a common mistake that retail investors make when looking at auto companies other auto companies have financing arms so when looking at enterprise values you have to adjust those out when you do you'll see that tesla is by far uh <laughs> more more richly valued with respect to my incentives listen uh, ross gerber put out this rumor that my dad worked for gm and he still works for gm that's a lie um and, and i find it offensive did, did you not tweet i, I find it offensive your father worked there i find it offensive I, I, i'm answering your question that, that's all i'll there. say there and then with respect to my incentives it's very simple i just want to be right and i i personally believe based on my analysis that tesla is worth 24 dollars. and if i'm right It'll go down as the most overvalued stock in the history of the stock market. And I think that I am right. So that, that's, that's simply my incentive. I want to be right. I don't have a grudge against anyone, and I only get paid if I'm right. So we'll see what happens. Okay, thanks. Gordon, I have a question. I have a question. So you just, I think you're always very clever in how you phrase things. So when you say Ross Gerber put out this rumor that your father works for GM, but then you say, I don't want to comment on it, what do you want us to believe? I answered the question. I'm not commenting further because I find it offensive and I don't want to go further than that. I find it more than offensive, but I don't want to use that kind of commentary. Uh, so okay. Guys, fair enough, Gordon. Uh, no, I, I don't fair know enough, Gordon. Not, we're not, I'm not going to ask you that. I have, I have, a, I have a, a different question. Your advice and your price target, that's your price target and your advice for the last five or six years. Do you... Um, how do you think about it with your clients or just people 
that you prevented from maybe owning Tesla stock because you're so bearish and, and call, uh, calling for a complete collapse. You've cost probably billions and billions of dollars of your clients being made by not owning the stock. You've been so wrong on the stock. If anyone was short the stock, they got murdered, like the Chainoses of the world and whoever uh, other smart guys. Um, how long does it take for you to be right? Like, are you going to be right in a decade? Within that 10 years, you've lost fortunes. So at some point, don't you pivot and say, maybe I got the story wrong here a little bit. Maybe I should uh, look at this a little bit different rather than acting very dogmatic in your opinion. Um, first off, you asking that question shows you don't understand how risk management works. And also that you don't understand that I cover 20 stocks. Tesla is one of 20, all 20 of which I put an equal amount of work into. Um, and then secondly, you know, this is a discussion about fundamentals, right? I mean, you can get a stock price wrong uh, for a little bit and then get it right. So, look, I, I think this is I, I just really I just wanted to understand why everyone in this room believes every word Elon Musk says when he's told so many what I would say uh, are mistruths. And in some instances, you know, outright lies, the, the you know, the, 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 the fake solar panel, the cell solar city. The doctor 2016 paint it black video, which is still on their website, filing a 13G instead of a 13D. Um, th those aren't those aren't, you know, things where he was slightly off. Those are effectively exactly. just truths that he knew. were. I agree. With, with so respect, though, question Gordon, was, why do you with, guys believe everything this guy says, given I'll have, with, with respect, I can't speak truth. for everyone. I, I don't agree with Elon on everything and I don't take everything he has to say. At, at face value. He may believe it, but timetables may be different. Maybe things get pivoted, but you have to take the totality of everything. You, I think we spoke before, you admitted that you were caught completely off guard by the growth of Tesla. The fact that they're going to do close to 2 million vehicles, 1.8 this year, was nowhere on your radar That's screen. Completely so you've incorrect. got that completely wrong. The margin story, you got completely like wrong. You've talked about that. So you've been wrong no, no, you're, nonstop, you're but you, you're, you're dogmatic in your false. opinion. You're, you're making things up. Our DCF. I'm not making anything up. And, and I'm very good at risk management because I made DCF, a fortune in Tesla stock. So I'm very good at risk not, management. Um, I'm going to have to mute like... everybody. I'm going to mute everybody because I don't like this uh, people talking over each other. Please do not interrupt. And I think we've given enough time on this. Um, Jeff, did you have your hands up and you want to come in? Uh, I, I don't know what else th there is to say. Um, I'm good. Okay. We can, we can move on from this. I mean, I think this is just going to be back and forth. And, you know, clearly there's a lot of things that Elon has said that it did not come true. We agree with that. But none of us, I don't think, very few of us, I mean, there are definitely the, the bulls here that believe every word he says. But you also appear to be somebody who's not, um, who thinks everything he says is wrong. We have multiple gigafactories. We're still shooting for 1.8 million. So no matter what you're saying about, uh, you know, what's happening, let's say you're right and it falls by 1.7 million. That's still a massive growth from where it was from last year. So it's still uh, it's shocking to me that you still are saying that it's complete. You know, it's going to crumble to twenty dollars. But that's that's uh, that's just it. I, it just feels like we're talking to somebody who doesn't actually have real kind of you know reality in place here because you're not addressing the things that he has called right that Elon that Tesla is doing continuously correctly. So, what has he called right? Can you, you highlight the things that he's got? By the way, well, I, I don't, I don't know. 500,000 vehicles in 2020 Excuse me. when I mean, he this called that five been years ago. Since 2000, and we are here at 2023. You called it at 2018. We're here at 2023. The Tesla Model 3 is the, you know, Tesla Model Y did become the number one selling car that he predicted was happening. We do have multiple Giga factories that are live. People were saying the Giga Shanghai wasn't even going to make it, not going to make any moves. Everything that it's actually funny, it's the opposite. Every See, you're, you're saying I said these things. I never said any of this. Well, so you, you, again, you're Tesla putting Q words does. in my mouth that no, no, I didn't what, say. What you, you've been saying that Tesla, well, tell me the things that you think Tesla has done correctly. And then I will tell you the things that I think Tesla has done. And Elon has said we're correct, incorrect, because I agree with you that not everything he says is correct. But look yeah, at so the company. The biggest, the biggest it's existing, surprise right? to us is that Tesla was able to get to the level of sales they were able to get to of pure EVs. That is an accomplishment, no doubt about it. Uh, listen, I don't hate Elon Musk or hate EVs or anything like that. It's very simple. I think Tesla stock is grossly overvalued, number one. And number two, there's a difference between saying he said things that didn't come to, to true and saying he said things that were categorically false. Like when you hold up a fake solar panel 
on the set of Desperate Housewives to, to sell your Tesla investors on acquiring Solar City. That's not saying something that didn't come true. That's outright deception. When you doctor a video of someone driving around in 2016, and when the video starts, you say, the man is not driving the car. He's only there for legal reasons. When that video had like, you know, hundreds of disengagements and was shot over multiple days and the car actually wrecked itself, that's, there's a difference between saying something that didn't come true and outright deception. When you say you have funding secured to take your company private in the middle of a trading day and you don't, violating securities laws, that's much different than saying we're going to get to full self-driving in two years. So again, like those are the, so when you, when you consider the stock is grossly overvalued in our view, and then additionally, you consider it's run by someone who has said these things. Um, you know, we think there's significant downside. That's it. Like, okay. so Thanks. that's, that's our view. Thank you, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. That's, that's well, how, you, um, how, do you, how do you respond to the claims that Mary Barra and Jim Farley have made over the last, call it three to five years regarding their EV projections and their autonomy projections versus what's actually happened at their companies? I think, listen, I think that EVs are a niche. I think that, you know, there was a initial interest and I think that interest is dying quickly. And I think that if they go down the road of doing what, you know, the current administration wants them to do and changing their entire setup to EVs, I think that's going to be a massive mistake that will send their companies into bankruptcy. So I think that they're seeing the shift in the market and they're shifting accordingly. And you can see this with respect to how Tesla is having to cut its prices to basically see flat quarter over quarter unit growth. This, this is where we're completely different realities at this point. So you think that EVs is a niche and it doesn't even exist. And there you go. That's just move on from that. As simple as that. You don't. But, but I mean, Herbert, the question wasn't answered. Exactly. I mean, these CEOs <laughs> came out on the record and they made promises to their shareholders and to, and to, and to investors. And, and there, I mean, there, are, there are many, many years. FSD off. exists. I drive it every day. So it's one thing to say that it didn't exist in 2018, which is true. But he was talking about autopilot, by the way, and highways. But now we're talking FSD. And it's not like it FSD was vaporware. FSD does not exist. FSD is defined by level five ADAS. What you have is you have assisted drive level two. That's not it's, FSD. My point is that it's not. You were, you were positioning it as complete fabrication, a complete lie, like a Theranos scenario. And that is not the scenario here, right? We are well on path. It's very clearly that it's going to happen at this point. But in your mind, it EVs is not won't even clear. exist. You need well, LIDAR and mind, radar. Clearly, you need it LIDAR, does not need radar, LIDAR and radar to achieve so FSD. And Tesla doesn't have that. There's well, already let, let's go off the FSD point a minute, Herbert, because that could be debated back and forth. I got, I got one last question for Gordon. And, and, and try to, Gordon, really think about this question now. You, you talk about Tesla and you talk about legacy and, and, and competition and, and Tesla being overvalued. How do you reconcile that with, and I know what you're going to say from the money aspect, but, but, but from a pure value, right? People buy cars. They're going to buy electric cars in the future. I, I think you know there's something called the IRA, an Inflation Reduction Act. People are going to be able to get 7500 off the cars for the next, I don't know, next decade, right? So EVs are definitely going to be a play a bigger role. They're already a huge role in China. Europe has adopted them. America is the last really to, to get on board, and there's a lot of growth here. So you have that at the, as, a, as a tailwind for Tesla with the, with the battery credits and, and, the, and the car reductions, which are going to make more people people more um, interested in buying a Tesla. Then the, the, the last part I'll make is the infrastructure play. You see Mary Barras of the world who didn't want to do it, getting on a space with Elon saying, we'll adopt your, your charger standard. Tesla owns, it's like the gas stations, owns all the infrastructure. Uh, essentially, they have it all over the world, but in North America, they are the dominant player on infrastructure. Uh, Farley has come aboard uh, um, very happily. Uh, you see all these other companies, too, too many to, to um, enumerate, have adopted Tesla's infrastructure uh, charging. So how do you ascribe value to a company that essentially owns all the gas stations for all the EVs that these automakers make must go through Tesla? Do you ascribe any value for Tesla having that infrastructure already in place and working? Okay, with respect to this infrastructure and them owning the gas stations, it's ridiculous. Um, so you just said they own everything, right? You said they already do, right? That's what everybody says who goes on TV and talks about this. Did you know that less than 1% of their revenues come from superchargers? 
In fact, I think it's over 90 percent of the time people charge at home. So you, you talk about this infrastructure they own, but there's no money from it. Number one. Number two, with respect to value, when the automotive when the automobile was invented, right, when everybody was doing horses and then, you know, the automobile came to market, you know, there were 100 automobile companies and everybody in the stock market made their bets and they put all their money into those different 100 automobile companies. Every single one of them went bankrupt. Why? Because making an automobile is highly capital intensive and the margins are essentially non-existent. And what Tesla has done is enabled a number of companies to literally spring up out of nothing because literally money was free in 2020 and 2021 if you said EV. And now you have a ton of competition with people who can't basically, it's, it's like more supply, same demand. So you're going to have a price war. We said this last year. We showed the math. You're going to have a price war in the automobile sector, and Tesla is not going to be spared, as we're seeing. So with respect okay. to value, what is the value? I don't know what the value is. I think I know, based on my DCF. But I can, I can tell you this. It's something significantly less than what this okay. company is valued at today. And mm -hmm. it's easy to say they're going to be a you know, robot company. <laughs> they're going to be a, a FSD company. But you know, people were saying that, again, Adam Jonas – was saying they were going to, you know, take over, you know, L Uber and Lyft in 2023 and giving them $300 billion of value. You know how much that business is worth today? Zero. So I'm going to value them based on what they do, which 98% of their gross profit comes from selling cars. And Let's when you're selling cars, this is a company in decline, significant decline. So be careful. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, Omar, welcome up. I don't know what how much you've caught. Hey. hey. Hey, we're just having a fun time with, with Gordon. Uh, do you have any questions for him, um, Omar, or any comments? No, I don't have any questions for him. I mean, Gordon is someone I've followed for years, and he's been wrong about Tesla every step of the way for years. It's kind of comical. So I don't know why anyone would listen to him. Okay. So – um, that's fine. We're, we're just having a conversation with Gordon. He, he's making some points. We're making some back. Uh, I think that I, I actually enjoy it. I love debate. So Gordon, I hope you, um, Jeff's very intelligent. Um, I'm trying to do the best, uh, I can with some of my point of view. So thanks for coming on. If you have anything else to say, or do you want to close up with anything respectfully? Looks like he's left. Uh, no, I think actually because Herbert made me co-host, and since he blocks me, I think that threw him out. So I'm oh really God. sorry. It should have been more <laughs> appropriate, uh, but I appreciate this. Yeah, I mean, I think we spent way too much time already on that topic anyways. So 